This week for EMN5, we're going to talk about Achilles tendon rupture. Now, the Achilles tendon is actually the largest and the strongest tendon in the body, but despite that, it can actually rupture sometimes. It's formed right where the gastrocnemius and the soleus end, and then it inserts into the calcaneus. And the problem is it has this weak spot. It's about two to six centimeters above the calcaneus, and it's because it has bad vasculature there, and so it's prone to rupture right at that spot. Now, the classic patient you'll see come in is about 30 to 50 year old male. They're doing this occasional, very strenuous activity, uh, maybe not as conditioned as they could be for that activity, and so they end up with rupture. And they could also have increased risk if they have prior quinolone use, um, if they're on steroids, either they've had them injected to that area or if they're on oral steroids. And the way they get it is if they have a dorsiflex foot that has some kind of force to it. And they'll say they have this sudden pain that develops, and they might even hear a pop or feel it or feel like they're kicked in the back of the foot. And they'll say that they possibly can't even walk. They definitely can't run. They can't stand up on their toes. They can't go up steps. These are all things they might describe to you if they're coming in with this ankle pain. And some things you're going to note on physical exam, uh, first off, have them go into prone position. It's easiest to see this. And you'll notice that first off, the back of the ankle probably is going to appear somewhat swollen, possibly bruised. They lose the definition here. So this is um, the non-injured side. You can see that there's a nice defined Achilles. And on the other side, you lose that definition. One other thing to note is that on the affected side, they lose that plantar flexion that the normal side has when the patient's at rest. Now, imaging is not that helpful to us in the ER. Most of this is going to come from physical exam and from their history. But say we do get an x-ray, these are some findings. So this is the normal side here, and this is the ruptured side. So on the normal side, we see that um, there's this fat pad here. It's called the Kager's fat pad or pre-Achilles fat pad right there. It's a triangle, um, and it's normal finding. And you'll also see that there's this very well-defined Achilles tendon. On the affected side, you'll see that there's loss of the pre-Achilles fat pad. It's somewhat mottled. It's not as clear. There's also a lot of soft tissue swelling, and that nice definition of the Achilles tendon is lost. Again, these are things you might see on x-ray. Here's one more example. Again, we had loss of the pre-Achilles fat pad and a lot of soft tissue edema. Ultrasound might actually be a little bit more helpful to us. You can see the Achilles tendon on ultrasound, and here's the calcaneus. You might see on a partial tear that there's a fluid collection, some disruption of the tendon, um, or if it's a complete tear, the anatomy is all distorted and there's a big gap in the tendon. So we said that physical exam is probably actually the most helpful. There's one more test we can do called the Thompson test. And in this test, you're going to squeeze the calf while the patient is prone on the table. And normally, you should see that the foot has some plantar flexion as you squeeze the calf. Now, if it's ruptured, especially if it's completely ruptured, you'll not see any foot movement here on this side. Okay, let's look at some examples. You can see what you think is the abnormal side. Okay, so here we're squeezing the calf. You see a little bit of movement. Here you're squeezing the calf. There's potentially a little toe movement, but really no ankle movement. Let's compare again. Definitely has plantar flexion. This side, no plantar flexion. All right, and one more example. This is a little more subtle. So squeezing the calf. All right, which side do you think is abnormal? All right, let's switch to the other side. So now we're gonna do the patient's left foot. Remember they're prone, so it's backwards. Squeezing the calf. And there you can see really no movement at all. No plantar flexion. So in that case, it was the left foot that was uh, had the rupture. Okay, so for treatment, if you are suspicious at all for a rupture or tear, you're going to put them in a posterior short leg splint with slight plantar flexion. The best way to do this is just to look at how the patient's normal foot is at rest and try to copy that on the other side. They should be non-weight bearing and make sure they follow up with ortho, give them some crutches, and tell them to do the standard pain control, icing, and elevation. All right, so three to remember. You should be able to get most of this on your history and exam. They might complain of a pop, sudden pain in the back of the ankle, and they can't go up on their toes. For the Thompson test, have them lay prone and squeeze the calf. If there's no movement, you should be concerned for a complete rupture. And if you're concerned for a tear or rupture, put them in a posterior splint with slight plantar flexion and have them follow up with ortho. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.